This fire was caused by something like this. What you're seeing here is the battery from an e-bike or e-scooter exploding. And the recent fire in New York was far from the first time one of these devices, also known as micromobility devices, has started a fire in the city. This is close to our 200th fire this year. See, as the popularity of electric micromobility devices has increased, so too has the number of fires and injuries they've caused. Now, lawmakers are trying to find a way to stop these fires from happening. But approximately 880,000 e-bikes were imported into the US in 2021, and the majority of an estimated 65,000 New York delivery workers rely on these devices for a living. So finding a solution without penalizing them is tricky. Let me explain. So days after an e-bike fire set ablaze the 20th story of a New York apartment block injuring over 40 people, New York City Council hosted a hearing on solutions to e-bike fires. And listening to that hearing, you get a sense of how dangerous these fires can be and how hard it is to find a quick fix. Now, the problem isn't limited to New York. There were some 70 e-bike and e-scooter fires in London in 2021 and an estimated 10,000 in China between 2013 and 2018. But because of New York's close living quarters and how many of these devices are in the city... Many folks are actually looking to us. Um, the FDNY in New York City is really taking the lead on this. The New York Fire Department said that batteries in these devices are short-circuiting or getting too hot, and that's causing these fires. They explode, pretty spectacularly, and ignite the device itself and anything near it. Obviously, the risk is amplified when these devices are left to charge in people's homes, often overnight, often right by the entrance. And for delivery workers, the problem is exacerbated by how many miles they sink into their devices. See, delivery riders work on average over six hours a day for six to seven days of the week, according to a survey of delivery riders. They're really getting a beating out there. This is something that's being used, you know, 16 hours a day on city roads with potholes in, you know, in all sorts of weather. That's a lot of charging, discharging and potential damage to the battery, all of which can lead to battery degradation and fires. Things get even more dangerous when riders try Frankensteining different parts from incompatible e-bikes or using degraded second-hand parts. Do-it-yourselfers are not doing anyone a favor. Now, it is possible to get e-bikes that have been certified to be safe. There's a certification standard called UL2849, which basically means the bikes have been tested and are regularly inspected. But right now, there are only 13 e-bike brands that have been listed to this standard out of the hundreds of brands out there. Now, just because an e-bike doesn't have this standard doesn't automatically make it dangerous. The standard only came out in 2020, and right now there's no requirement to have it. But the problem is, without it, it's kind of hard for users to know whether their ride is safe, but just not certified, or genuinely really dangerous. So what's being proposed by lawmakers to try and stop this from happening? Firstly, there's discussions about ensuring all e-bikes and e-scooters hit some level of safety standard, whether that's on the whole device or just on the battery itself. We do need the federal government to step up. That could involve banning the sale or import of uncertified devices. But there are concerns among some that certification could lead to more expensive bikes. And that could price some lower income delivery workers out of a job. One suggestion is to give rebates to delivery workers when they buy certified e-bikes. But it's unclear who would foot the bill for this, between the government, delivery apps or restaurants, and who would qualify. The sale of second-hand parts could also be regulated, but according to delivery rider groups, it's often hard to tell which parts are second-hand and which ones are brand new. If I can put you two batteries in front of you, you will not even be able to tell me. But one solution to stop e-bike fires from happening inside people's homes could be to stop charging them there, and instead provide public spaces for charging outside. In New York, they're starting to do just that, investing $1 million into creating hubs for delivery workers at places like this old newsstand. And this is a place where they can charge their e-bikes, get rest, get shelter. It's a game changer. Now, it's unclear how many of these hubs will be created, but investing in safe public charging infrastructure outside of residential properties could be the solution to stop these fires from spreading further.